So today we are moving right along in chapter 9. We're now at 9.4, which is all about line graphs. Okay, so remember in the beginning, the very first lesson we learned about line plots, right? And then we learned about two coordinate grids and ordered pairs. Then we learned how to turn those ordered pairs and coordinate grids into, into graphs by plotting different points that show the relationship between the x-axis, or independent variable, and the y-axis, or dependent variable. Today we're going to take it one step further and turn those graphs into line graphs, okay? And your learning goal for today is to be able to analyze and display data in a line graph. It says Marshall and his friends are making a map of their neighborhood. The community clubhouse is four blocks north and three blocks east of Marshall's house. What ordered pair gives the location of the community clubhouse? So what important information do we need in order to solve this problem? Well, first of all, what is the problem asking? I almost skipped step one. Liam? What is the location of the clubhouse? Yeah, we want to know what ordered pair gives the location of the clubhouse. Okay. What important information do we need in order to solve this problem? Adriana? Of his house. Okay. So here's the map. Do we care where the mini golf is? No. Do we care where the fire department is? No. Do we care where his house is? Yes. Okay. What ordered pair describes where Marshall's house is? Divina? Three, six. Three, six. Yeah. Okay. So if I know that north goes up, am I going to be adjusting the x axis or the y axis wow. coordinate? The y coordinate. And I want, is three or six the y coordinate? Six, yeah. So, and then how much? How many blocks north is it? How many blocks north is it? Four. So what do I have to do to the y coordinate? Add four. What's six plus four? Okay, that's the y coordinate. How do I have to change the x coordinate? And how do you know? Quran. You have to change it. Why? Yeah, when I'm moving three blocks to the east, I'm moving three blocks to the right. And when I'm writing, moving to the right, am I moving on the x-axis or the y-axis? Yes. X. So three plus three is? Six. So the x-coordinate for the clubhouse must be? Six. six. Now, that's what I think. Let's, let me check on the map. <laughs> okay, so here's Marshall's house. I'm going to move four blocks north. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to move three blocks east. One, two, three. Is this 610? Very good. A line graph is a graph that uses line segments to show how data changes over time. Okay, it's very important that we remember that line graphs show changes over time. The series of numbers placed at fixed distances that label the graph are the graph's scale. Okay, so the little tick marks you put on your x and y axis, that's the scale. Okay, the intervals or the difference between the values of the scale should be equal, meaning you need to have evenly skip counted scales. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want you to think, how does this relate to science? It's asking us to graph the data, okay? So we can see here there's some data about the time of day and then the temperature, okay? So at 1 o'clock a.m., so that's right after midnight, how many degrees was it? 51 degrees Fahrenheit. What about at 2 a.m.? 49 degrees Fahrenheit. So go ahead and make this chart in your notebook so that when you, you can graph it later. Okay, we're going to take it step by step, but the first step is to write down the data. So make a little table and write time and temperature, and then go ahead and make sure you note that it's in the a.m., okay? We have to read the directions carefully because there might be more than one step we need in order to give the full, complete answer. So Thomas, could you read us what the directions say to do? So we need to make a graph. What else? Okay, so we need to use our, first we need to graph the data, then we need to use the graph to figure out during which two time frames did the greatest temperature change occur, okay? So our first step in graphing the data is to write the ordered pairs. Okay, so you can see they started it for us right here. 1 o'clock, comma, 51. Why is 1 o'clock on the x-coordinate side and 51 on the y-coordinate side? Arushi? Because 1 o'clock is uh, the time of day, and 
tiny cake, and we know that um, when we're measuring the time graph, we know that the amount of time is going to always be the independent variable. The amount of time is not always the independent variable. But in this case, it is the independent variable, so it goes on the x-axis. Okay, so what would our second ordered pair be? I want you to make a list of all the ordered pairs. What would the x-coordinate of our second ordered pair be, Adriana? Um, so if your second ordered pair, it would be 2. 2 o'clock. Yeah, comma. Comma 49. Okay, so in your notebook, go ahead and make a list of all of the ordered pairs. Looking at our data, we can see in terms of the time, it would be reasonable to skip count by the hour, okay? Let's look at the temperatures. That would be on our y-axis. Well, how should we skip count? Should we say like 1 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 degrees Fahrenheit, or should we go 5, 10, 15, or should we go 10, 20, 30? What should we do? Go ahead and talk to your neighbor. Liam, what I hear you saying is that your skip count, you would skip count by ones for temperature because you notice that the lowest degrees is 44 and the highest is 51, and that's not a big difference. If I skip counted by 10, they would all be within the same yeah. interval. But then I'd have to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 44. My graph wouldn't take place until I got to the ceiling. This is kind of a trick question. So for the vertical axis, instead of going, we do start at the origin right here, but do you guys see this little zigzag mark that shows that there's a break in the scale okay it shows that I'm I'm skip skipping from 0 all the way to 40 and then they decided to skip count by 2 okay that way we can have a scale that's reasonable for our data but also we don't have to list out 1 through 39 does that make sense okay so if you ever want to show a break in the scale all you need to do is draw a zigzag line like this okay and then you would continue or if it's on the x-axis you would go like this Does that make sense Okay, so now go ahead and set up a graph in your notebook that looks like this. Don't forget, it's very important to label your axes. We talked about this in science before, but it's also very important in math because if you don't, your data won't make any sense to me because I might think it's how many donuts did you eat each hour from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock a.m., yeah. okay, or how many math tests you would like to take each hour. Okay, so you need to make sure you label your axes so that I know what your graph is talking about. Okay? What would be the fourth coordinate that we need to graph? Adriana? Um, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock? Um, mm-hmm. 44. Yeah, so here's where the ordered pair would be 4 o'clock and 44. What's the next plot dot that we need to graph? Jason? Mm hmm. 5 o'clock? And how much? 45, okay. Of course, that's halfway between 44 and 46. So, Darth, what's the next point we need to graph? Um, the next point we need to graph uh, is 4 o'clock and 44. So, we've already graphed that one. Um, 5 o'clock and 45. So, this is where I need to remind you to pay attention because we've already graphed those ones. Okay. We need to do 6 o'clock and 44. 6 o'clock and 44, okay. And finally, Soham? 7 o'clock and 46. 7, 7 o'clock and 46. Then what you need to do is you need to connect each line. Okay, you're only going to connect, sorry, connect the dots. Now notice this is not a best fit line. The line changes, shows the change in time for each segment. Okay. Now what you need to do is, remember, part of the question asks you to graph it. The second part asks you to look at the biggest difference, temperature difference, between which two times was there the biggest temperature difference. So you need to look at each line segment in the graph and find the line segment that shows the greatest change in temperature between two consecutive points, meaning two points that are right next to each other. Where do you see that biggest change? Go ahead and talk to your neighbor. So between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock, you can see that the line dropped the most, right? So the biggest temperature change occurred between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock. 